What is going on, beautiful people? Today we have another book review. It is called Boundaries, okay? From the title, we could pretty much decipher exactly what I'm gonna be talking about, except what if I told you throughout your entire life, every hour, there's probably boundaries being broken or let in or set, set boundaries in your life, okay? This has to do with someone coming into your office while you're at work and you need to get a project done and you say, hey, listen, can we talk later on? I have something to do. That's a boundary being set. If your friends hit you up and say, hey, listen, let's go out tonight and let's get drunk and you say, you know what? I gotta wake up tomorrow morning. I wanna go to the gym and I don't wanna be hung up hung over for it, that's a boundary being set. What if people continuously say, hey, listen, let's go on a trip, let's buy these shoes, let's spend money at this expensive restaurant. You say, no, 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 that's money boundaries being set, okay? You're either breaking boundaries or you're going ahead with boundaries. You're either setting boundaries or you're not setting boundaries. This book, and I'll tell you, full disclosure, very Christian-based, very God-based, very books of the Bible, Luke, Proverbs, Matthew, John. So if you're triggered by that, first of all, please unsubscribe from this YouTube channel. We're not dealing with people that are weak-minded, that can't deal with someone else that has a differing opinion, and people that can't read a book and exclude the things and just get the nuggets that pertain to them, okay? Here's another thing. It's a little side note, but when I read a book and I say, this is amazing, I'll put it out there. Someone says, I don't like that author because at one time they said one thing that I disagreed with. Fantastic. I'll read an entire book, 250 pages, 300 pages. I'll spend three or four days, three or four nights of multiple hours reading this and I'll get one nugget and that's all I need. Okay. I don't need everything to be agreed upon. I just need one or two nuggets. And that's essentially what I get into in the member circle if you want to join that. But let's get right into this. So it's called Boundaries. They have an updated and expanded version. That's the one that I have. And we have a lot. So this might be a long one, but I'm going to tell you this is probably the best, especially today, the best mentality to have, especially today. And the reason being is that the narrative being pushed by the mainstream media, by, the, by social media, by your friends, by colleagues, by school, everyone being pushed is boundaryless, okay? Eat whatever you want and you'll be fine. Spend whatever you want, you'll be fine. Hook up with whoever you want, you'll be fine. In other words, all of these things that create chaos in your life, Okay, as Jocko Willick says, is you must be disciplined to be free. Okay, if I want a free body, if I want a healthy body, I have to say no to donuts. I have to say no to alcohol. And if you saw my last video, alcohol had a big part of my life during COVID. Okay, so go check that out. Let's get right into this. And this is directly from the book. So if you want all of the entire outline of the book directly from the book, click the link below. Number one. I'm not going to go number one, number two, because there's too many. Taking responsibility for my life opens up many different options. However, if I do not own my life, my choices and my options become limited. Okay? If I do not own my life, if I do not create my life, I have no options. Because you are essentially just a piece of garbage walking or actually floating in the ocean. And wherever the current goes, wherever the waves go, wherever the narrative goes, wherever social media goes, wherever your friends go, you're going to go. Okay? You have no boundaries. You are boundaryless. This is being pushed on us. Okay? This is why setting up walls is necessary. This is why when, say, immediately a thought of castles in the mid- mid- medieval times, they had castle walls. And because that wasn't enough, they had moats around so they can easily take on the enemies. That's what we need today. We need a moat in castle walls to say no, which I'll get into. Okay, number two, or moving on. Boundaries, boundaries are good, by the way. Okay, enough of this nonsense that boundaries are not good. Okay, boundaries help us define what is not our property and what is not our responsible and what we're not responsible for, okay? Boundaries tell us, I'm not responsible for that, okay? And as we'll get into is, we're not responsible for other people, okay? You're responsible for yourself, I'm responsible for myself, okay? That's the way it should be. You have boundaries, I have boundaries, you are okay with my boundaries, or you're not okay. It doesn't affect me, because they're my boundaries, all right? We are not, for example, responsible for other people, as I just said. Your words let other people know where you stand and thus give them a sense of edges. I cannot stress this enough. Your words 
let other people know where you stand, thus giving them a sense of your edges that help identify you. This is the problem with today, okay? They, they have this, this term out there called NPC, non-player character, which is essentially we're all lemmings. We have no diverse opinions, diverse character traits or thoughts or anything that identifies anyone as different, okay? Yes, people use identity markers that are physical, but we have no identity markers that say, hey, listen, that's not okay you just said that. That's not okay that you are breaking your word. Breaking your word, you're a friend, you told me you are gonna be here at this time, or you told me, I'll give you an example. I got a buddy of mine that we continuously try and set up a dinner. Literally, before COVID, so we're post COVID, but before COVID, so for almost two years, we tried almost seven or eight times couple of us, my buddy and I, we were on the same page, but we had this one friend that, yes, two days before, I got to work late. Two days before, I got to be on call. Two days before, I got to work overtime. And he's not even in the medical field. This is in security field, okay? And it's the security of not a bank or anything. It's a museum, okay? It's, it's, it's at the point where you, you say, dude, y y you're breaking your word too much, okay? And ironically enough, Literally two days ago, the same friend who him and I are on the same page on going out to dinner, he texts and says, hey, to us three, let's get something on the calendar. I said, listen, this guy's probably going to say yes then and cancel. I didn't even get a ha ha, that's funny, you're giving me shit kind of thing. For me, I said, dude, this is the boundary. I'm not putting something on my schedule and then you canceling it all the time, okay? We have to lay a boundary down. Here's another example. I have a friend of mine, we were out to dinner many years ago, probably five or six years ago, and he brought up something that was very interesting, is that when he was dating a girl, because he had to wake up early, he said, dates latest 7.30, okay? And they're done at nine, all right? There's one time where he's dating this girl, and she said, hey, listen, I'll come over. He said, you gotta come over before nine, I'm gonna be asleep. She texts him at nine o'clock and says, hey, listen, I'm gonna be there in 15 minutes. He says, don't bother coming over, and, she's, and she starts going crazy. He said, I told you what the boundary is. It's nine o'clock, okay? If you wanna see me, if you wanna come over, it's before nine o'clock and we end at nine o'clock. And the reason being is, and I'll get into this with the way of the superior man by David Data is the man, a man, male, has to be on the path. And you have to say no to things, okay? You have to be on your path, which is I'm in shape, I'm making money, and then you start adding things like dating, like a vacation. Those are not your primary objectives, okay? You as a man or a woman, you have your primary objective and then you add things into your life. When you start making other things your primary objective, going on vacations, drinking, gaming, pornography, eating, dating, whatever the case is, you're getting off your path and now you're going in the wrong direction. And then you don't have boundaries. Your boundaries are someone else's boundaries, okay? So I've adopted that and I said, listen, I wake up at a certain amount. I wait. This is the best way to v reverse engineer it. I, make, I wake up at this time. I need a certain amount of time, nine hours, okay, of sleep because my, our efficiency is not to be in bed for eight hours because we'll only get seven hours. That's called sleep efficiency and you could track that on the aura ring. So I need nine hours because my efficiency isn't as good as say someone else. So I need at least nine hours. I reverse engineer that. I then need a half an hour to, re, to draw down, get undressed, get into my work, my night clothes, bedtime clothes, to shut down, all that jazz. And then I reverse engineer and I say, I gotta end it this time. This is the time we have to go. And you keep on reverse engineering and you put that person into that. If they don't wanna respect those boundaries, they're probably not right for you. Perfect example is that when I go on a date and the girl says, let's meet at nine, that's not the girl for me. Okay, I don't want a girl that continuously says nine to 11. What? I go to bed at 11, I wake up at four, 4.30? No, that's not happening. Continue, continuing on. This is very important, feelings, okay? We're talking a lot about feelings today and it's disgusting, okay? 80% of, of today's discussion is about feelings. Enough about feelings, let's talk about logic, okay? What is the logistical outcome that I want? What is the logistical consequence if I do something, okay? I'll give you an example, health. 
we're talking about body positivity, okay? There is, a, there is no direct correlation on how I feel about my body and how my body actually looks, okay? If I really like my body, but I eat like shit and I don't go to the gym and I sleep terribly, I'm gonna be obese and or overweight and or type two diabetes soon enough, okay? We have to go like this. What I feel about my body and what my body is One's emotional, one's logical. I get on, the, I have a BMI, I have a heart rate variability, I have a resting heart rate. There's metrics that I could do, I can do blood work, and that's the logistical way to be healthy, regardless of how I feel about my body. Feelings should never be ignored, this is very important. Feelings should never be ignored, nor placed in charge. Your feelings are your responsibility, and you must own them. Your responsibilities should not be ignored because then we push it down, we push it down, and then it erupts, okay? I had a buddy of mine and he um, was very angry at his roommate many years ago because he kept on making food and not doing the dishes, not cleaning the apartment, having people over and leaving beer cans out. And over months, this, this, this animosity of not confronting his roommate over cleaning built up to a point where he snapped. And his roommate said, where did that come from? It's been building up for months. Okay, this is in a lot of relationships. People start just adding this, this layer of animosity towards their partner, their wife, their spouse, their husband, and then it just, boom. One day it just breaks and it all comes out and it just flows out and you just say, where in the hell did that come from? That just, was that all from me leaving a couple beer cans out last night? No, it was for six months of doing that, all right? So when something happens, you have to confront and say, don't say, I am blah, blah, blah. Say, I feel blah, 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 okay? Not say, I am angry, because you're putting yourself as angry as your identity. You're, but when you say, I feel angry, that means it's temporary. I feel angry. You take responsibility for it, you don't ignore it, and then you go and you say, how do I handle this? You must handle the emotions. They are your responsibility, they are no one else's. If you wanna handle your emotions a little bit better, read the book, Power of Agency, where essentially we have the agency between when something happens and the response that comes with it, okay? You get fired. Someone says, someone cuts you off, beats at the horn, gives you the finger, you then have a response, or you don't have a response. And essentially, the larger the agency, the gap between what happens and what your response is, you must expand your agency, okay? Within this agency is where your contemplation of consequences go. Should I react? Should I do anything? Do I need to get angry? Do I need to immediately attack them back? Do I go personal attacks? Do I not even say anything? Okay, for me is that my agency has grown so far. The divide is so large right now that so many things can be going against me. Angry clients, being yelled at, being uh, just called all these names, personal attacks from clients, attorneys, managing agents, brokers, sellers, doesn't matter, bankers, all across the board, board members. And I just, it just keeps on going into my agency and then they stop and then I'm calm. It's essentially a huge wave going against a wall and then it just bounces back to them. It doesn't, it doesn't go over the wave, it doesn't go over. It's not a beach where it just rolls out onto the sand and now you're part of their angry talk. Continuing on. To rescue people from the natural consequences of their behavior is to render them powerless. I gotta tell you people, this, this book is so relevant to today. Okay, let me read that again. To rescue people from the natural consequences of their behavior is to render them powerless. That's all today is, safe spaces. Keep them safe, coddle them, put bubble wrap out of them. No, they need to go out, they need to fall on their face. They need to go out and experience consequences, which is the next, next thing. Setting boundaries inevitably involves taking responsibility for your choices. Your choices. This is a Carol Dweck growth mindset. Read her book called Mindset. Growth mindset is necessary before you read this book. This book is totally a different paradigm if you have a fixed mindset where it's other people, they told me to screw myself. So of course, I have the responsibility to then go back to them. No, 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 no. You have the boundary 
to go back to them and say, nothing. Do you know how many DMs I get or comments I get? All these things. Or YouTube, this is, this is a crappy video, your hair is out of place, you look ugly, you blah, 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 personal attacks, ugly attacks, whatever it is. I don't really care because at this point, I have to understand that this someone is someone, okay? They're responsible for their own boundaries and their boundaries is personal attacks, making fun of someone, being a burner account and tearing into an anonymous person online that they've never met, okay? Continuing on. We rarely see people as they really are. This is very important, oh my God. We rarely see people as they are, all right? This is one of the biggest bias, human bias that we have today and we all fall into it. I fall into this trap all the time. I was running today, and as you're running, you see all shapes and sizes. You see tourists, you see New Yorkers, you see runners, walkers, bikers, cyclists, skateboarders, people going to work, people just older people, walking dogs, people with strollers, just literally everyone on the West Side Highway, all right? And it's very hard to see someone and not put them into a category. Or worse off, you hear their opinion on something that you disagree with and then you literally categorize their entire life into something else. You hear that they are a certain religion, they're part of a political party, they are something, and then you put them, they could be in an industry that you disagree with, they could be in an industry that you wish you were in, they were doing something that you wish you were doing, and then you categorize them or they're not doing something like going to the gym or they're going to the gym, they eat too much or they don't eat too much, do they have the education on food and exercise and sleep? Or are you doing the human bias of literally categorizing them before they need to be categorized? And we rarely, as it says, we rarely see people as they really are, it's our perceptions of who we think they are that we're seeing them as. The primary problem of individuals who can't hear no, this is the most important thing, I know I've said that multiple times. The primary problem of individuals who can't hear no, which is different from not being able to say no, is that they tend to project responsibility onto the lives of others. The primary problem of individuals who can't see no, who can't, I'm sorry, who can't hear no, you say no, they can't handle it because they project their responsibilities they project their values, their morals, their, their entire life, their, their entire life on the government, their entire life on their family, on their spouse, on their kids. They project everything, including their responsibility. They, they just offload it onto them. And then when they hear no, they go, oh, I'm even getting the chills thinking about it. I'm getting the chills thinking about that. Because when someone says no to you, you say, oh, okay. That's their boundary. Because you're responsible for your own life and your own boundaries, and that's their boundaries. And the only way, as I said in the beginning, is to set up a perimeter on what is acceptable. Don't, fin don't make fun of my mom, don't cheat on me, uh, whatever you say is, is your word, don't curse too much, don't, whatever it is, whatever it is, we need boundaries. It's called being a personality different than a personality next to you, which makes us amazing as a society. Continuing on, controllers also are limited in their ability to take responsibility for their own life. This, my friends, is massive. People want to control people's speech, what they're thinking, how they're thinking, when they're thinking, what they're doing, and if they can't control them, they freak out. And the reason being is that they're not responsible for their own lives, they're, so they're trying to take responsibility for other people's lives. Let me say that again. People that are controllers, this could be in a relationship, this could be a boss, this could be a parent. A parent that controls their kids, where they go, what they do, they're gonna be a childhood star. They're getting a full scholarship to Syracuse to play football, okay? Instead of the kid making that decision. They're offloading their responsibility as a parent to the kid and saying they're responsible for my happiness to be a full scholarship ride to Syracuse University or whatever the case is. They must be a banker, an attorney, a dentist, a doctor. They must have straight A's, okay? And if they don't, is that conditional love, unconditional love? Are they responsible for their own boundaries of saying, you know what, my own boundary is saying they have their own boundary of what they want to do in their life. 
Maybe they don't want to play football. Maybe they're worried about head injuries. Maybe they don't want to go to Syracuse. It's too cold. Controllers are limited in their own ability to take responsibility for their own lives. So they are essentially, as a boss, not taking responsibility for their own lives, so they're trying to control others, and that's where they get off. But the problem is, when that person starts putting up boundaries, the controller freaks out. They freak out. And now they want to control more. Because the population, and this is what's going on with the government, they want to control things, and when people say, no, we're all individuals here. We can make our own decisions. The government freaks out, or society freaks out, or the boss freaks out, or the company freaks out, or the teacher freaks out, or the college freaks out, and then they want to go even harder in full steam into controlling. Woo! Great book. Pick it up. But if you don't like Christian talk, no, oh, I'm going to freak out. They said the Bible. Confronting an irresponsible person is not painful to them. Only consequences are. Let me say that again. Confronting an irresponsible person. Irresponsible, they're cheating, they're drinking too much, pornography, this is a spouse, this is a partner, this is a friend, they're, they're eating too much, they're being lazy, they're spending too much. Whatever vice is in their life, confronting them is not painful to them. The consequences are you eat too much, you have a stroke. You spend too much, you have no path to wealth. You're in debt. The IRS is knocking at the door. You, say, you don't say I love you, or you game too, not, too much, or you watch too much pornography, and then your spouse leaves you, or you're, you have no sex, or you're not happy in your relationship, okay? Confronting the person is not painful to them. The consequences are. So you have to confront the person, okay? I, as I said in the beginning, you are responsible for your life, I'm responsible for my life, okay? It's simple as that. It's simple as that. Stop telling me what to do. You take responsibility for your life. As William McRaven said in his famous UT commencement speech, I think it was UT commencement speech, he said, make your bed. There's a great book. It actually may be somewhere over here. It's make your bed. And that's essentially what he talks about the entire book. It's probably at home. Make your bed before you do anything else. Get that win. Dr. Jordan Peterson talks about clean your room. Go clean your room. All right. Don't be a chronic people pleaser. This is the perfect example of someone that's, that is Catholic guilt, Jewish guilt, parent guilt, immigrant guilt. In other words, you got to do something that the parent tells you to do. And if you don't, you feel guilty. Okay. This is a perfect example to read the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. All right. I think it's by something Glover. No more Mr. Nice Guy, highly recommend the book. It changed my life. There's a lot of men out there that are unfortunately pleasing their mother and their mother's not even there. And that mother figure turns into their girlfriend or their spouse or their, their partner, their boss, could be their friends, and they're just pleasing everybody. They have no spine, they have no boundaries, they do whatever, they are that little piece of garbage in that, not them, they're not garbage, but they're just going whatever the ocean does. Oh, we're going over here. Oh, there's a current over here. Oh, there's a wave over here. Let's go. Let's go over the edge of my boundaries. I have no boundaries. I do whatever you want me to do because I'm a good little boy. That's what they do. All right, guys. Uh, that's the length of a lot of the book reviews. Again, boundaries, when to say yes, how to say no, to take care, to take control of your life. Highly recommend you pick it up again. Full disclosure, Bible, Luke's, verses, Proverbs, Matthew, all that jazz is included. So if you have any triggering things, again, please unsubscribe from this YouTube channel. We only deal with people that have strong personalities that are able to actually decipher that people have differing personalities. That's my boundary, okay? Hopefully you have a boundary like that and you don't come onto my boundary and tell me how I should decorate my house how I should mow my lawn. It's, that's the exact same thing. We have a plot of land, which is our life, and we have, is it manicured the lawn? How is the exterior? How is the interior? In other words, the interior of the house. How big is the plot of land? In other words, what's your responsibility? Is it just your plot of land? Is it other people's plots of land? In other words, are you a boss? Are you a parent? Are you a coach? Are you a father figure? Are you a community figure? Doesn't matter. 
the bigger that we can get, the more masculine you have to be, the more responsible you have to be, the larger your boundaries, the more that people are going to try and go over your boundaries. They're going to try and break through your boundaries. You need the boundaries, you need the walls, like the castle, and you need a moat around it. All right? So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Again, if you want this full area, this full uh, blog post, it's in the link below. If you want to join the member circle, we're going to be blowing that up. That is also in the links below. If you guys want to recommend a book, we're reading a lot today. So have an amazing day.